You know, I often find D&D a very interesting exercise in storytelling, because it is so clearly a storytelling device as are most tabletop games, and yet it's so vastly different from any other form of storytelling. No other form of storytelling do you have a group of people creating a narrative together where one of them is helming it and the rest are experiencing it and creating it together. The closest thing you have are improv classes, and let's be honest, most improv is usually comedy based. Not all of it, but most of it. And I personally, I love studying literature and writing and storytelling and the very art form that it is, and Dungeons and Dragons, tabletop games, that entire spectrum confounds and confuses me. Which might sound kind of weird, right? Like I've literally made an entire channel talking about storytelling in Dungeons and Dragons, but there's a reason for that. I find the best way for me to learn is to talk about something, because if I talk about it, I am encouraged and forced to go ahead and go experience it and research it more. So the reason I made this channel and wanted to talk about storytelling in D&D is because I find it so fascinating and a very different topic that I don't really know that much about. The more I learn, the more I know that I don't know. But why is it so weird and different? Well, the simple fact of the matter is that there are a lot of literary concepts that are very based in reality that just don't apply to D&D in the same way. For example, the topic of today's discussion, character arcs. Character arcs are interesting because they're basically the outline of how a character grows or changes over the course of a story, or vice versa, how they change in a negative fashion. But it's how a character develops over the course of a story, and honestly, without character arcs, literature or storytelling in general would not be that interesting. After all, why do we watch stories? To see something change, to see how the story develops and what it does to change those around it or in it. And usually character arcs are planned out with definitive points of where you can see characters change through their choices and actions. Dungeons and Dragons, however, does not have planned out character arcs. Everything is improv, nothing is planned, so how does that work in this sort of storytelling format? Well, welcome to today's topic. Today we're going to talk about character arcs, how to handle them, and what you do with them in Dungeons and Dragons. So let's talk about that. Now, like stated earlier, character arcs typically have planned out points where the characters are going to make certain decisions that show how they are growing or regressing, depending on your positive or negative character arc. And for the uninitiated, a character arc is essentially how a character grows and progresses or changes over the course of an entire story. Usually, this is culminated in a single choice. A choice the character was unable to make or made the wrong decision when confronted with, and at the end of the story, they will make the right choice. Now that's a very huge simplification of it, but it's a general idea of what a character arc is. And you can immediately see why this is sort of a problem in D&D, because it's all improv and nobody actually knows where the story is going to go. What if they're not presented with that choice? Or what if they are presented with the choice but the dice say otherwise? Or what if they make a choice but then the character decides, nope, because the player didn't like that idea, etc, etc. Ultimately, tabletop games are just a totally different beast in general when it comes to actual storytelling, because the simple fact of the matter is, in all other forms of storytelling, somebody has carefully crafted the narrative. In Dungeons & Dragons, it is all improv and every single player at the table has input on where the story is going to go, so you can't plan things out as much as you want to. So ultimately, you should just ignore character arcs, right? They're not that important. I actually don't agree with that sentiment, and that's why I wanted to make this video. See, I noticed something when looking at all of my previous PCs, and more importantly, the PCs, or player characters, that my players have brought to the table. See, every single one of them has a vice, a problem, something in their life that they know is negatively affecting them but they are unable to overcome. And if you look at it really closely, you can start to notice parallels in the vice that their character has and problems that they face in their own life. And this isn't surprising or a dig at any of my players, it's just facts. When we write, we write what we know. When we storytell, we tell what we've already experienced. So of course we would put that in our characters. I mean, ultimately, you always put a piece of yourself in your character. I made a video on that. Link in the description if you want to go watch it. But it's not a bash on anybody, it's a simple fact of the matter. And when we play D&D, the point of playing Dungeons & Dragons is to experience a different reality where we are capable of different things and to be able to go through new experiences. And one of those experiences that I find almost every player wants, whether they realize it or not, is to be able to overcome or at least face that vice. And let me make it clear, not every single one of them wants to overcome it. I've had players with crucial critical character flaws that they have had to overcome day in and day out in their life, and in D&D, they just wanted to be able to experience what it was like to give in to that. To be able to experience just accepting that part of yourself. And that led to a negative character arc and a really interesting story. And it's not wrong of them to do that. The point of D&D is to tell an interesting story. Not a story where everybody gets a happy ending. If it was always a story where everyone got a happy ending, character death wouldn't be possible and the dice wouldn't even be there. But it becomes really difficult to be able to tell that story and that character arc because of the random chance of the dice. But I firmly believe that finding those character arcs that your players are trying to have their characters go through, whether they realize it or not, is a huge part of creating a compelling narrative and a story that lasts in their mind, while also, and most importantly, making it a fulfilling experience. 
But if I've already spent all this time talking about how difficult it is to tell a character arc in D&D, what do you do? Well, here we go. What I do, and yes, this is just my personal opinion and methods, but what I do is I try to identify very quickly the vice that my players have put in their characters. And this is usually pretty easy. For most DMs, just go look at the flaws part of their character sheet. They've usually put something there. Not every player does this, and not every table uses it, but a lot of them do, and this is a great first step. If they haven't done that, however, you can either ask the players or wait for what I like to call the moment. Every player I personally have ever seen at my tables, even the most min-maxing characters, will at one point decide to make a decision that is clearly the wrong decision. They will do something they know leads to negative consequences. When they do that, they are showing very clearly what the vice their character has. For example, I have a player in one of my campaigns who likes to go out of his way to make sure that he has an incredibly unique and potent build. Despite this, however, he constantly makes decisions that is obviously detrimental to his character. Touching a cursed sword, going in the wrong direction, talking to somebody who's clearly lying to him, etc. It becomes very obvious what this player is trying to do. He wants his character to have a weakness in their ability to be able to perceive danger. Inquisitive to the point of being dangerous to themselves. Now, is this a vice particularly in the player as well? Well, I don't know. They might have an issue of being too curious, or maybe they're just wanting to experience what it's like if they don't have the inhibitions they currently have. But clearly, there is something within themselves that they wanted to explore by putting this weakness in this character. Therefore, I can do a few different things. I can either choose to go ahead and put a situation where he harms himself so much he is forced to be able to confront his own recklessness, or if it is clear that he wants to explore this in a positive light, I can go ahead and put a situation where everybody else doesn't want to do something and he charges forward to do it because he's curious and shows everybody else that sometimes you just need to take actions in order to be able to move forward. And that's what I find so interesting about character arcs in Dungeons and Dragons. See, there are two different types of character arcs, or three if you're the one to go deep into it, when talking about a literary sense. There's positive character arcs, where your character grows and changes in a positive light. There's negative character arcs, where your character grows to believe something false and therefore has a negative character arc. Or neutral character arcs, in which your character does not change at all, but instead is so steadfast in their beliefs, they change the world and the people around them. In D&D, most character arcs are negative or positive. And what's so fun is in tabletop games, and hear me out on this because it is my favorite part, in tabletop games, you don't choose whether it's a positive or a negative character arc when you first start the campaign. The events, the actions, and everything that happens in the campaign then dictates how your character is going to grow, and that makes D&D and tabletop games the single most exciting and impossibly wonderful way of telling a story because even you get to be surprised at what happens to your character and the characters at the table. I had a character, in fact the first PC I ever played, who I've mentioned before, D'Artagnan, the gunslinging dragonborn, who was so close to going through a negative character arc because of the events that happened in the story, and it was only because one of the other player characters decided to stop taking his bullshit and just stab him in the arm, yes, this really happened, that eventually he woke up and realized that he was harming other people around them to the point where he made them so angry they wanted to attack him despite caring about him. Now, it was a very interesting situation, and that's not necessarily the conclusion he should have come to, but he did. This eventually led to him dropping his alcoholism at the behest of one of the other party members, and even eventually just giving up adventuring entirely because he wanted to do something more productive with his life. I, when I created the character, intended for him to go through a negative character arc, so the fact that he ended up going through such a positive one was so fascinating, and the only reason it happened was because D&D is a game of chance and collaborative storytelling. I wanted to tell a certain story. The table around me did not, and we came to a much more exciting and satisfying conclusion. But as a game master, I think it's incredibly important to note what kind of things your characters are going through and what vices they're fighting, and give them options and reasons to face those things and create their character arc. Give them something that challenges the weaknesses that they have. I've talked before about talking about how you have to make sure that your party feels strong by giving them reasons to succeed with their strengths. This is the inverse of that. Not only can you give them reasons to succeed with what they're good at, you can also give them reasons to fail with what they're bad at, therefore contrasting their abilities. If everyone could do a backflip, it wouldn't be special. But because not everybody can, when somebody does do a backflip, it's worth standing out. Same thing here. If you succeed on everything, your strengths are not worth anything. But if you are continually succeeding at one thing, but showing where you fail at another, it contrasts how good you are at something else and contrasts how bad you are with something else. Variety is the spice of life. So too in D&D. That right there is why I choose to focus on character arcs as a DM, because I think it's incredibly important to be able to give your characters the chance to face their vices and come to a conclusion in them. And when you come to those conclusions, it often gives a catharsis to the player because they were able to face something they probably have to deal with in their own life and figure out something about it, whether it was good or bad. 
If it was negative or positive, it doesn't matter. They went into it and they learned something about it and they knew that they could do so in a safe environment at a game table and that's very important. Just make sure that when you do this and you confront them with these things, you know your player's limits and you know that they are okay with this because it is so important to maintain a healthy and safe environment at your table. So go out and run an amazing game, you beautiful bastards. Go out into the world and make it your own. Don't forget to have a great day and never forget to play your role. Thank you. Come again.